Hello and welcome back fellow Vuperians! Some of you last time on my prior video actually suggested this one and I thought I'd give it a shot. Today we're going to be inflating Pluto to the point of being a star. Actually, we, we can just stay on this simulation because Pluto is, believe it or not, in our solar system. Alright, because I knew that you have to subscribe now because clearly... Wait, where are the labels? Where It's gonna... Okay, big brain moment would be actually knowing which one is Pluto without labels. I'm, at least we finally got better pictures of Pluto, so they actually got a selfie experience. Um, right now they're at 0 0.00219 Earth mass, and their radius is 0 0.186 Earth. 18.6%, that's not too bad. If I had a radius of 18.6 times the... Uh, times the mass of Earth or size of Earth, I'm really sorry. Uh, they'd probably refer me to a specialist. Um, we'll go ahead and do this in two different ways. First, we will increase Pluto's mass until it becomes a star like originally requested. Second, we will just set it to a star where it is as if it just instantly happened. And third, we will use the radius to just inflate it like a volleyball. It'll be great, all right? Volleyballs aren't really... Ah, well, they do inflate, they just don't get much bigger than their specified size. I'm, you know, my my metaphors are off today. Alright. Here we go. Yeah, you gotta kind of keep in mind, Pluto has a really odd orbit where it goes above and below the plane that most of the things in the solar system are on. Um, so, usually we just have to worry about a two-dimensional representation of the solar system, but with Pluto it gets a little bit more complicated. But you can actually see that the Sun is moving kind of upwards a little bit towards Pluto, and then where'd Pluto go now? It's downwards. It's okay, let's continue increasing the mass. We're only at one times the mass of Jupiter. Let's do ten times the mass of Jupiter. I think like 70 something. Oh yeah, it's a star now. Pluto is a very dark and very angry star. Very, very angry star. But it still hasn't destroyed the solar system yet. But the sun is definitely being pulled around by it. It's far enough away from the sun that it's not doing catastrophic damage, which is actually kind of impressive. I expected it to get get worse much faster. If we set the temperature like 4,000 degrees, will it look better? No, apparently not. Uh, Alright, let's go ahead and increase the mass further. Let's get it to half of the sun. Oh, simulation really slowed down there. So at half of the sun, the sun is now being pulled uh, so quickly that the planets around the sun can't really depend on it anymore. <laughs> it's not a stable orbit. As you can see, Earth's temperature is kind of all over the place. Um, this is like if your heart looked like this at a hospital, uh, they would be very concerned. Probably get in a history book though, so congratulations. Oh my god, <laughs> this is this is going all over. So now we have a binary system kind of with Pluto and the Sun fighting it out, and Pluto and Jupiter are getting really close to each other. Wow, dangerously close. Okay, the Sun's coming in for another shot, and I I think this may be it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we're gonna make it much longer. I mean, this could potentially go on forever, I guess. <gasps> no! Jupiter is being th Oh my god, Jupiter is being thrown. Like, oh, uh, I guess it'll go over Earth. I thought it was going to get shot into Earth. That would be hilarious. Jupiter is getting shot, like, right over the sun, though. Getting curved down by the mass of the sun and just chucked. Oh, I think Jupiter's done now. I, I think it's been thrown just out of both of the systems. Nope, it's coming back around. Gravity is that marvelous thing. Jupiter does get really close now, though. Pluto seems to have lost all of its friends, and it looks like for the most part Earth is fine. I'm sure astronomers would be very concerned, though, and the climate would be kind of wacky for a bit, but it looks like nothing has happened that was so serious like everyone would die yet. I mean, sure, the sun moving and pulling the entire solar system through the asteroid belt would probably be pretty bad, not gonna lie. but. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say not too destructive. Not too destructive. Alright, what if we get Pluto and inflate it 
like really actually no that's better for another video i'm more interested honestly let's zero velocity pluto and make it the mass of the sun this this one will be interesting at the very least so now pluto is just falling into the solar system it's got no no velocity going no angular velocity to save it no angular velocity to save the rest of the solar wow saturn honestly first one to get screwed up again i'm sorry saturn all right and now at the last second before it collides with the sun we know what'll happen if it hits the sun look at a supernova and that's no fun instead at the very last second we are going to move pluto just enough to miss just enough Oh, do you see that? Wow! Those hit so quickly. I'm actually very curious how fast they're moving. 70 kilometers per second. Oh my god. Oh boy, they just got flung. Oh, Earth! Earth! It got so close to the sun, it hit 80 degrees Celsius, and now it's... It's, it's going the long way away. Alright. So. Pluto being a star. It could be very destructive. I think we all knew that, though. Um, it can be destructive in a few different ways. Generally, I would prefer if Pluto were not a star. Um, much less death occurs that way. <sighs> what if we replaced Jupiter... Or not Jupiter. What if we replaced Pluto with a second sun? Because then we get the light and stuff that we didn't have before. Alright. Sun. Let me get stationary. Let's see what it looks like. What happens to Earth when we have something fall from the distance of Pluto. And we'll actually do it from the perspective of Earth here. So... Look at Earth and the surface. So we can see the sun's light, and then over here, it should be darker. It should be darker. So, like, we have nighttime here, we have kind of like twilight, and then we have sunlight. So, you can definitely tell something's up. The Even Pluto being that far away is still giving quite a bit of light, but if we let it get real close, let's see. Oh, yeah, look, you got three quarters of the Earth is lit up by the stars. This is so good for solar, and it really does enforce a strict sleep schedule. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, Earth is gonna get real... Oh, wow, they didn't hit, e hit each other. They just went really quickly by each other. I didn't expect that. How fast are they moving? 522 kilometers per second. That is really impressive. Uh... Wow. Alright. No, the sun got deflected at Earth! Oh my god, wait. The temperature of Earth. I just want to check the surface. So you can see the surface temperature here. Oh, come on! That would be increasing so much faster if this happened. I mean, sure, part of the Earth at 40 degrees, but it would be so much more dramatic than that in reality. Earth has now sunlight on both sides of it. There's just a strip of nighttime. And I think it'll be like that kind of forever. Because the stars are kind of on opposite sides of the Earth. There is no longer nighttime. Oh, that's kind of sad. But since there's two stars, actually, even though they're, they're both getting far away from the Earth, the temperature's staying pretty stable. I mean, after a while, though. Yeah. Yeah, Ice Age time. Alright. We made Pluto into a star, and then cheated and just put the sun where Pluto was. I think the results are pretty clear. Um, never trust Pluto. It's not really a planet you were lied to. And uh, with that, 
I'll see you all next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stuff. Otherwise, Pluto will eat your family. <laughs>